Morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Last year, 2022, we finished up the year on a high rhapsodic note. Today, though, we'll launch with Ferocious. Now, before any of you think of picking up your phone and calling, there is an anomaly that a number of you received. And part of that has to do with, oh, hold on a second. Oh, okay. Uh, part of that has to do with a major blunder that I made. So the, the some of you got bag baggies that were labeled auspicious rather than ferocious. But I, with 100% confirmation, can tell you or confidence, I should say, can tell you that those in fact have ferocious in them. How do I know this? Because we're out of ferocious and we're out of ferocious because we fill these baggies with what uh, ferocious we have left. And that's what we wanted to do to share this special tea with you and have you have a chance to have a shot at a nice championship tea. So where does this come from? This is the Oolong tea. Comes from the Wui Mountains, where all the cliff teas come from. And actually, before I launch down into the details of this tea, let's talk about a couple things in the shop this week, because there were some interesting things in the shop this week. First off, you may have noticed that we were inadvertently, not inadvertently, well, we were closed for a couple unexpected days this week. And that had to do with some plumbing issues. Everything is resolved and we're off and running. So that's really good news. I need to focus on some of the tasting things that occurred this week. So when you're, offered or when you think, or, or let's back up to this shop for a moment, because that's really where everything emanates from. In this shop, and today is an example of this, you get a bar. And that bar tells you, okay, this is how I can understand XT. And in general, if I encounter XT, I should be somewhere on this bar if I'm at a high level. So that's really important to remember. The tea leaves tell the story. We curate this collection, we bring it to your attention, and then you taste the difference that the tea leaves tell you about. So Part of my favorite thing about this week was we had two old customers, a couple, wander in yesterday. Very relaxed, haven't seen them for, I don't know, probably three or four months. They've been with us from the very start, very consistent. They don't drink anything else aside from tea, essentially. And they came rolling in, relaxed, no kids with them. It was really great. And then the gentleman of the partnership said, ah, I'm almost out of enemies demise. That's a white tea cake. And he says, I regret I didn't buy more at the time when we had a sale, which was a year or a couple years ago. And he said, but you know what? Show off your new whites. Okay, I understand that instruction. And his wife said, show off your new reds. So gave them both very, very good new whites and reds for which after the first one, the gentleman said, oh, you gotta set aside some of this for me. 
I said, okay, let's try this second one first before we do any set of signs. But, you know, I'll follow your instructions. I said, okay, I'll, I'll try the second one. They tried the second one. The wife ended up buying the first one. Husband really, really wanted to buy the first and the second. But when they realized, when he realized what the price of it was, he reflected because the price of these things this year is not inexpensive because we aimed in a different way this year. So all of you need to understand this in the sense that we aimed at the very top. And that was in each of the areas that we got these teams. And as such, the wife went ahead and bought the red, which was omnipresent. And the husband will be back to buy the other tea or to buy more of the enemy's demise. So it wasn't a question of do I buy or not buy? It's which investment do I make? So that was a fun story with him. It was fun to see. Them. <clears throat> My son this week, who lives in Vancouver, brought me something. And in fact, before he arrived this week, he said, oh, dad, you know, I got this cliff tea and it's about $1,300 a container in China. And he works with lots of Chinese parents who are fabulously wealthy. And so when they get gifts, they get big gifts because they're in the government, they're in various other places. And so the result was, I said, okay, explain this concept of container. They said, oh, it's three packages in a box container. I said, okay, let's back up here because I'm trying to understand what you just said. Here's what I think I understand you just said, that there are three packages. Each package has somewhere probably between eight and 10 grams in it. And there are three of these in this fancy packed thing. And I said, this is the gift you got. He says, yeah, and I tried one of those and it was super fabulous. The cliff team. I said, okay. I said, I would love to have some further understanding of this. And then as he talked about it more, I suddenly realized that this might be. So, why am I telling this story? Be before I get too far down this road, I'm telling this story because we're in the cliff tea area this year, uh, today. And I want to make sure you understand that it all isn't always about in the mountain. Because you've heard me say over and over again, in that 7.7 .7 square kilometer in the mountain, that's where all the prize tea is. Now, if I've said that, I'm wrong. That's not where all the prize tea is. So there are these small, small other places in other parts of the Wui Mountains. And one of them you've heard of before. That's the Tung Wuhan, and that's very famous for smoking pine. But along the way, they do some other fabulous Wulong teas. And this Wulong tea that my son brought down was from the Tumubon area. And as soon as we tested it, we said, ah, oh, this is the real thing. This is the real deal. And as it turns out, we also, through some connections this year, were able to score also from Tumubon, not the exact same teeth, but close. And so it's really interesting, the price has to match a location. If the price for a cliff tea like this had been, say, half in the mountain, hardly would have been believable. 
Now, if somebody had said high mountain, because for cliff T's, high mountain is frequently said. It's not frequently said, but you hear that more and more these years. Then that's a different situation. First off, to you and me, high mountain, what does that mean? I'm a skier. High mountain to me means 8,000 feet. No, I'm a mountain climber. I'll tell you what real high mountain is. So high mountain, though out there a lot in the T world, usually has to be or should be nailed down a little bit more precisely. So there are areas in the Wui Mountain that are at a high elevation, relatively speaking, and I'm talking between five and 7,000 feet above sea level. And those, some of those places also produce some fabulous, fabulous teeth. We have encountered some of that this year. So just to give you a little prelude to ferocious. So ferocious comes from actually in the mountain. That's where ferocious comes from. But in the mountain isn't a guarantee it's gonna be the best of the teas. But in this case, it is a championship tee. This tee <clears throat> is a 2021 pick. And I don't want to give away the secret of this tee. In fact, I want your assignment today is to tell me why I named it Ferocious. That's what your assignment is. And it's going to be different than what you think. If your initial estimation is, oh, I know right away why it's ferocious. Hmm. Let's make sure we think through this. All right. So we're going to get into the tasting part of this fairly quickly today because I want to spend time. I want to be able to spend time, give you time to analyze and discuss. So in a minute, I'm going to have the team master come up. And she'll demonstrate. And what you have in your bags is seven grams. So this is a more heavily grammaged tea. And we'll talk about all of these things as we're going through the process here. So without further ado, it is my great pleasure to bring up the tea master. Hi, good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. Yes. So, yeah, I know you like oolong tea. So me too, either. So we do, it's my favorite tea, but the, you know, my favorite tea, not this type, of, you know, I like it, oolong, you know, the clean tea in the Fujian. This is the, so this is my section, huh? So even people ask me, but you do large, you do small, I do both for Idaho, <laughs> yes. It's a love right now. It's cool. I'm really, really, I really appreciate it. it's a lot of heart. But uh, this is the original style, but I like it too. So we'll see how huh? I do large cup, two courses. So I take, no, I take. So you see her normal tableau, a tea tray. We're going to use the 16 ounce Bixing pot. This is more a decorative uh, pot. It's not decorative, it's decorative for this occasion. And then a large glass. 200 degree water. So good oolong, so we have a lot of technique. So my friend come over, you know, the, but the Chinese, huh? she said, but I do at home, but it's very much different. You brew the here in, in your tea shop. I said, correct, me too either. So we'll see how huh? this is a lot of taking the force. Same, it's a maximum tea pot. However, gentle, slowly, clean, inside, outside.
So the usual to make sure that everything is cleaned and ready to go, 200 degree water on the outside of the pot, inside of the pot, into the receptacle cup, double check the pot. And at this level, you always want to double check the pot because frequently in these type of pots, or occasion I should say, tea leaves get caught and it's hard to see, but you note know my finger is going here. Here's the, the spout and there is a, a, um, a sieve there. And what you have to make sure is that there's, yeah. and actually good thing that the team master is doing that because there's a couple leaves. This is very important, uh, how it's a good wood. Uh, so you can easily take off the loose leaf. So this is a lesson for you who are using these pots at home. If you think you can just rinse quickly and go to the next step, Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't because leaves get stuck in there. And then if your tea doesn't taste exactly the same, you wonder why. You know, have I made a brewing mistake? Or did I pick the wrong tea? Or all sorts of things. And sometimes it's just as simple as having three or four leaves stuck in that sieve. because it's really hard to see at that angle. Okay, Team Master is taking the ferocious leaves. Gets them into the pot. Shakes them up to wake them up. And then she draws the 200 degree water. Gonna add that in the side of the pot. Actually, she's gonna pour over the top. And then add into it. Okay, and we set the timer for three minutes and 30 seconds. So instantly, you notice that there are a couple things different about this tea. And in a minute, I'm gonna give you a huge clue about what you might expect from this tea. So a lot of grams, relatively longer time, Let's talk about this tea. What is the real source of this tea? Is this tea by any chance a blended tea? Of course, we know we don't do blended teas in, here in the shop. So the answer is probably not. Not unless, not unless, this is a type of scarlet rose, which indeed this is. And so when I say from inside the mountain, now this takes a different tenor, doesn't it? Because it's not one varietal from inside the, inside the mountain. This is several varietals of that 
are used in the creation of Scarlet Robe that created this team. Very special in that way. And when I said championship team, every year, so let's talk about tea and tea behavior in the tea industry and looking under the hood, so to speak. So what do I mean by all these things? <clears throat> in China, and, and this really focus on China because you have the tea, little tea groups here who try and look under the hoods, but the hoods they look under are relatively limited through experience and access. The hoods we look under in China are very broad because you've got the tea groups there, you have the tea industry professionals, you have the scientists who are working out in the fields, you have the farmers, these are the hoods. We pull up the hoods, look inside and ask questions, yes. What does championship tea mean? Good, championship tea, and this is, all this hood pulling up has something to do with championship tea. So in the tea industry at the top levels, owners of tea either plants or, and by plants, I mean processing plants or very large farmers or major scientists. When they go around showing off to each other, and they do, this is one of the things that's fun. When you have great tea, it's very fun. You get in the room with these guys, you have your other fun first, nice meal, you tell whatever jokes you're gonna tell. Uh, well, give me some, some fun sachin. Okay, don't give me. Okay, so the timer uh, has gone off. And I haven't forgotten the championship question. Team master, not in a hurry. My goodness, big color, big color. Oh, even a bigger aroma. So it's certainly not black, although from your camera angle, it might look blackish. And there's some red in there, quite a bit of red and Geez, I don't even have to get close to this. There's some uh, attention to detail. Pay attention to me calling here. Ugh. I am so sorry we're out of this. I still haven't forgotten the championship question. I will get to that. We're first going to enter the quality arena. We're going to take a little bit more time doing this because this was graded as a championship version of Scarlet Row. And so who does the grading? Do you just get anybody who's walking down the street of Wui Mountains? And you almost could say, yes, if they actually live there, that might be okay. But the answer is no, not really. You get people in the tea industry. So you get the best of the farmers who participate in that. You get professional judges and you get uh, tea plant owners. And these are processing plant owners. And so these people all make part and parcel of a committee which makes judgments about these teas. So in 2021, this tea from the Scarlet Robe category came up as number one. Now this thing cost 
$125 an ounce. When we saw what this was, we grabbed some. And that's the cost to the public. The, and we felt what an incredible bargain this thing is. All right, so let's see if we're right. Maybe, maybe we're not right. Maybe I, I made a bad guess. Let's see. Let's first smell the leaves. Remember, we're working with 200 degree water here. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of heat. Let's not burn our nasal passages. Even as excited as we are to smell this thing. And by the way, if you don't end up liking this tea, does this mean you're non-championship material? Of course not. You are all championship material. And we have, for your category of tea, also championship material. So we all have our personal preferences. But oh my goodness. OK, I've already formed an opinion from the tea leaves. Have you ever made a bad guess about a tea? <laughs> Have I ever made a bad guess about a tea? A bad guess in what respect, I suppose. Um, I think in terms of tasting teas, uh, over the last few years, we don't make bad guesses. We have, again, it's looking under the hood, and you look under enough hoods at the source, and all of a sudden you can't be fooled. And this is why we give you the bar. And this is why we also give you the large cup. And this is why the Chinese continue to have a standing offer for us to bring large cup to China. So all of these things count and they are through the accumulation of this looking under the hood experience. All right, so let's uh, smell the tea. You're not smelling anything yet. Let's hurry up and have me smell it and enter the quality arena so that you can do that. And remember a 200 degree inhalation. So what did Jeremy wrote to me and said something about a slur, but I hesitate to ever use that term because most of the time when we think slurp, we think of something that is going to have more liquid enter the mouth. This is very hot. When I say inhalation, I really aspirate tea into my mouth and not very much. And so what are we looking for? We're looking for mouthfeel. We're looking for levels of astringency. We're looking for where in the mouth it is. We're looking for levels of density. We're also looking for smoothness or lack thereof. We're looking for aftertaste. And then we're looking for energetics. I'm getting a pretty good feel already. Now, remembering that this is a young tea and we usually age the scarlet robes, this should add to your ability to make some judgments about this. Okay, it's your turn. <laughs> So can you use the story on championship tea, or it makes it a championship tea, or is that oh, well, story complete? The, the story is basically complete. You get people who have experienced year after year after year seeing what tea, from their perspective, from their taste perspective, from their mouthfeel, uh, which tea rises to the level of 
this is the best I've ever had. So when my son in Vancouver said, this is the best I've ever had, that caught my attention because while he's not a professional judge and he's a casual oolong drinker, it still caught my attention that he said that. It's like, okay, that's the first time I've ever heard you say that. So let's see what this really is. And then when he goes through the description and so forth. So yes, this is experienced people in the industry who are growing in the area every year in November have a competition. And during that competition, the teas are graded. Now, this is really important to understand because we have other championship teas in here. And particularly this year, we have some championship teas that we can't put on the board. Because if I put them on the board, you would think I had lost my mind in terms of price. But that's just what the price is. And Xiaobe and I still got them anyway because we enjoy learning about what the experience can be. Remember, here today, when you entered the room today, your experience with Cliff Teats, the range was here. Most people's experience with Cliff Teats is right here, one or two. Yours is way out here. By the time we leave today, your experience will be out here. This is what we're doing. And by doing that, you're participating in this sense of judging and championship. There's one more aspect to this. And it's really, really important. I said these professionals get into the room. You know what? Yeah. Let's go on because I don't want to uh, talk and talk and talk uh, and not have you have a chance to have your chance to talk. So it's your turn and I'll finish up this story as we're going through your process. So hopefully you've got your cup already. We're gonna clean out the pot. We're double checking everything, making sure that that sieve is okay. At least to me, it's in there. It's the same tea. That's an advantage. And that's a joke because you never want any tea in there because you, you are changing the inherent nature or depth or strength. You want it to be the same. So when you're in a contest, you want the conditions to be the same. And while we're not in the contest, we're in a tea judging situation. Tea appreciating situation. Make sure your pot is all ready to go. And you get the leaves out from your bag. Put them into the pot. And we're on for a journey. Shake the pot. Smell. Make an initial judgment. And this judgment, is it, is it good or bad? This judgment is What's the strength of this? Which direction do I think this is going to be? That's what we're making a judgment about. You're drying your water, 200 degree water. You 
you know, pour in the pot. Hopefully not directly on the leaves, but if they get directly on the leaves, don't worry about it. Okay, you set the timer for three minutes and 30 seconds. Which I am doing here. And because all of you are more efficient than I am, you have already done. All right, while this is brewing, let me finish up a few more things about what professionals in the tea industry do when they get together. So they carry around these little packages of tea. The ones that they think are gonna show off best in front of their friends, knowing that their friends are in the tea industry. There's, these are people off the street. These are people who know the science about tea. They know they have, a, a, a sense of the range of the teas. They get a chance year in and year out to try some of the very best teas in the world. And so it's fun for people. And there, this has been fun for people in China since the Tang Dynasty. Tang Dynasty 618 to 960. So since then, you've had in the Chronicles descriptions of people having tea parties and comparing and then bragging about, well, I got my water from this place, and oh no, I got my water from this spring, and then making uh, comparisons. So in China, when we lift up the hood, these are the types of hoods we're lifting. And when we occasionally enter the small groups in China, this is when we were going every year, it's a different feeling because the range of what they really have and the understanding and the humbleness of what the approach is makes it so much easier in some ways to have really good conversations with these uh, aficionados and with these professionals. So, what I just described to you about the contest in the Wuyi Mountains, that's nothing more than a bunch of tea nerds in the Wuyi Mountains getting together and saying, hey, you have scarlet rope? You bring it on. I'll bring on my scarlet rope. I'll flatten yours. Now, of course, <laughs> we're in the tea family, so we don't use that language. And I even know why that came to mind as an example. But the principle is there. And you see it in the Chronicles where they talk, they talk much more poetically than me. And they use much more beautiful, many more beautiful words. Um, they, and I get to use the long word now, organoleptic. Yes, they refer to the organoleptic features of the tea in beautiful poetic ways. And think this, envision this. You have, you have a picture in the pictures I sent you. I think it was pictures of boys on a boat. We've taken that boat several times. We love that portion of the boat ride on the, in the Wui Mountains. And what it is, it's a three hour boat ride. And you sit there and there's a tea master. Oh, your timer has gone off, and my story therefore has to temporarily come to a close. But I'll come back to this because this is a great story. All right, you're slowly pouring out the tea. Just look at that color. Isn't that color incredible? Now, occasionally you see 
teas from the Wui Mountains, especially uh, some of the varietals of Wui teas, be you know, even darker. But it's sort of something like this coming out both dark and actually very clean. When you look at this, you can see all the way through. It's really amazing. So go through the quality arena with this. And you tell me what you're, what you're perceiving. And what, oh, go ahead. Smooth caramel scent of the tea liquor has something else in it that I cannot yet describe. Smooth caramel scent of tea liquor has something else in it not able to uh, describe yet. And so already you've lofted up some clues. Let's see what sort of loft you just did with that simple statement. You said to me in effect, okay, this is not high and bright. Instead, we've gotten away from floral, we've gotten away from fruity, we're in that caramel range, which means from a roast perspective, this must have some more roast to it. So, go ahead. Another teacher says, the aroma of the liquor is concealed by a roasty cloud. There oh, we yeah. go. The aroma of the liquor is concealed by a roasty cloud. So, you guys really already are jumping right through this and you're getting to the point right away. The roast in the Wui Mountains, and you know, they use all these language things. I hate it. The language for me, I'm a simple, simple man. So the result is give me low, medium, and high. And that describes roast to me. Nowadays, they say a low, moderate to sufficient. Low, moderate to sufficient. Hmm. Well, what does insufficient mean? You over roasted it or you didn't even get it roasted at all? So I'm always confused by this change of language, but I'm not confused by the process. And so this has cleverly done this nice roast without going over the top. And you've talked about the roasted cloud, but I haven't heard you say, oh, I am turned off by the fact that this roast is, is over the top, or this is just too roasty for me. So keep tasting. Talk to me about mouthfeel as well. And while you're thinking about things, no pressure, by the way. And uh, let me, this just gives me time to talk about more of this competition among the tea owners, more of the competition among tea aficionados. Why is that bar or that standard so important? And why is it so important to see why this bar, in some ways, makes it really, really easy for Westerners. And the Chinese who are in the tea industry brought this and they've been searching for something like this for a long time. Go ahead. For another participant, the whole top of my tongue felt dryness on, on the first sip. Dryness on the first sip. All right. So let's break that down. We're all scientists. Let's use, well, let's not use scientific words because I'm not prepared to do that this morning. 
But I am prepared to talk about a ratio, total polyphenols to total amino acids. So which do polyphenols, what is the nature of polyphenols in terms of mouthfeel? Generally speaking, they lend astringency. Does this mean that amino acids, they're just sweet and, and build muscles? Oh, wait a minute. I'm not in the right, right discussion today. Amino acids have a more subtle and varied effect on the taste. And so when you look at the, the comparison of polyphenols to amino acids, this becomes important because roast does something to amino acids. It doesn't do that at all to polyphenols. So to polyphenols, polyphenol content stays relatively the same, no matter how roasted it gets. Amino acids, some of them fall off. So which amino acids fall off? And I promise I won't use scientific names, the umami amino acids. Those go away. So if you can't taste umami in here, oh, okay, this had some, some roast to it. All right. What else goes away hugely? And that's L theanine. L-theanine loses up to about 52% of what it was when it goes, undergoes a roast like this. And that also does affect flavor. So before we even started, one of the participants had said, well, ferocious makes me think that this sweet tea has sharp teeth. I'm wondering if that's your experience, Rob, of this tea. How ferocious is it? And we have a comment by another participant. Mm -hmm. Serious minerality. Okay. Dry, dryness in front of mouth, but still juicy, smooth, swallow, warming to the core. Warming to the core, that's the energetics. I certainly feel that. Juicy smoothness in the mouthfeel, I get that. And serious minerality, I get all of those things. Now we're talking. We've got an atmosphere of roast. We've got caramel. We've got smoothness. We've got minerality and warming to the core. My goodness, a bunch of nice things. We've got from, from teeth to this taster frequent like this, tickling the dragon's tail, which sounds arguably more dangerous than teeth, but <laughs> um, sounds very fiery and hot and like a short lived tickle. Um, another participant says the mouthfeel is very, very lingering smoothness and the minerality is very balanced from the start. Lingering smoothness of mouthfeel. This mouthfeel just keeps giving and giving and giving. There is no question. And this particular commentator made the way, made the comment I would make about this, which is a balance in this minerality. So nothing in any of the elements overpowers the other part. Now, when you think of what you want for a great cliff tea that's heavier and includes the minerality, includes the roast, what would you want more than this? Do you have a comment, Bobby?
So my point about all of this is I think as you look through this, on the surface, if you didn't, if you had had this five years ago before starting sessions here at Set, uh, Sophie's, would you have liked this team? Would you have even given it a chance? You might have given it a chance, but you wouldn't have known how to appreciate it. You wouldn't have known how to voice, and you wouldn't have had that far. If you had been doing this in small cup only, some of you would have been able to appreciate, some of you wouldn't. What's the differentiation? And this differentiation is no different than in China. If you are an elite small cup performer, you would have appreciated this because an elite small cup performer would have brought out all these flavors in the ports and they know how to do that consistently. If you're not, then it's, this is really, really aggressively hard tea to do in small cup. Let me, uh, let me take a comment first. Uh, participant says she tastes a more pronounced sweetness as she gets further in the cup. Love this comment. So we had caramel in the beginning, and now as it cools down, and you get that warmth to the core, you have a little bit of that sweetness. Another taster participant says that he's just, just drinking it too quickly, <laughs> which is amazing to me. <laughs> Another participant drinking it too quickly. And I get that. I do get that because once you get to a certain temperature and can drink more, this is so juicy and the warmth to the core is really important. You feel like you have to have it. You feel it's that good. Another participant says the sweetness really lingers on her tongue as well. Very perceptive. You never for this type of tea would lead with sweetness. Caramel was the right lead. Now, this repeated talking about sweetness is the right spot because at this point, the amino acids that are left are interacting with your taste buds and you're detecting that sweetness. Yes. And the participant who talked about the roasty cloud, yes. the aroma said now that the cloud has kind of lifted some, it's clearing, and now the scent is more like hints of a honey floral in the dry leaves. Oh, that's so interesting. That is so interesting. This is a very, I actually like this comment a lot, but it's complicated. I have to go in and talk about the complications to this. So, this uh, particular commentator is talking about being able to perceive, I believe in the dry leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, almost a honey, uh, slight honey, slight floral sensation. And you know what? I don't disagree with that at all. I don't usually refer back to that because in the drink itself, while the sweetness at this level, sip after sip or, or gulp after gulp, you get it. It's, and actually, by the way, let's back up a minute. I caught the floral very early on in the initial aroma. I did catch it. And I was actually surprised in some way to catch any of it because Usually when you roast a certain level, hard to catch that. So 
Do we have another comment? Yeah, Chris Smith ahead. says he doesn't know if it's something about him this morning or his interaction with the tea, but he seems to be salivating more so with this tea than any other tea. Ah, uh, this will always win contests. If you make your audience salivate more, <laughs> then game over. Yes. Other participant says her initial perception was that it was smooth at the first sip, right at the first moments of the sip, and then the roast builds after that first smooth sense. And then the roast stayed with her for probably 30 seconds or a minute well after the liquor was out for that. So the roast builds for this participant to a point where it stays for 30 seconds or so after the liquor leaves her mouth. So I'm going to help clue you in about why we named this ferocious. Which part of this is ferocious? Which part fools you right away? And it is that cloud of roastiness. And you think, oh my God, how am I going to be able to get through this? This is, and this is how this becomes championship because the, the roaster and the producer played this little game with you and as such, it was really hard. And so the initial reaction was, oh, okay, we're in for a huge, uncontrolled roasty ride, a ferocious ride. But then as you get further in, you realize, oh, gosh, there's balanced minerality. He didn't tell me there was any sweetness in this. That doesn't sound ferocious to me. In fact, this whole thing seems not ferocious. So there's two things to remember about your tasting of it this morning. So today we're in 2023. This was picked in 2021. When Xiaobei and I named this, the first day we had this in here, I thought, holy cannoli. I said to Xiaobei, I said, Team Master, you and I are going to have a lot of ferocious because I don't think anybody else is going to be able to penetrate that cloud. But as we thought about it, just like all the other great teas in here, these things don't get judged as championship teas unless they are championship teas. It's not an accident that they get that. And it's also not an accident for us to make the selections. We have several teas that have come sailing in. The most famous is Hallowed Fortress, which was terrifying in the first days it was in here but now just seems really good. Another participant knows that he thought he also had a mix of floral, but with minerality and the scent of the steeped leaves. Maybe another name he says could be cloaked in shadow. Uh, <laughs> okay, commentary says another possible name is cloaked in shadow. So the reason we can't use that name Although I like the name, um, does, is any hero ever cloaked in shadow? It's only the bad guys who are cloaked in shadow. So that's a hard name for, for me to accept. Yes. Another participant says, hey, this is warming enough so that she can forgo the furnace this morning. <laughs> ah, and I love this comment because and, and I love it when the initial commentator who said warm to the core, right away, I'm sweating all over. And it's because of this tea. It's certainly not hot in here, but I feel as if it's hot in here. And I understand why you can forego the furnace this morning. 
because drinking this, you're, you're perspiring. All right. We knew we wanted to start off the year with a bang. And we also knew as we came down to the end of last year and supplies of this were dwindling. This was also one of the membership teams, I think, as well. And we knew as the supplies were dwindling, you know what, let's share this with everybody and point out why they are championship teams and just move, give everybody a chance to have this special experience. So I, I really like the fact that all of you participated in this, love the fact of all this commentary and the fact that you so quickly understood, oh, and even as you were drinking it, from cloud of roast to huge minerality, to balanced minerality, from caramel to cloud of roast again, to sweetness. Oh my God. Yes. The participant says that he's getting a sense of orange peel at the bottom of the cup. Not really orange, but a sense of that. A sense of orange peel at the bottom of the cup. I'm not, so I have something to look forward to. Um, I think the idea of uh, a little bit of spiciness uh, makes sense, but not much. Good comment. All right. So again, we wanted to share this with you. So let's clean up the shop uh, information. Some of you haven't picked up your packages. Quite a few of you have. I will send out a notice. I know that for Houston, we haven't sent the package yet. We'll send that today. If there are any other packages that need to be sent, these are membership packages, please let me know and we'll do that today. Why do we have to do it today? Well, I wanna make sure they arrive to you in time so that next week's tea tasting which starts a new set that you have in your hand. And we'll start off next week with a red tea called Golden Burst. And we'll have a couple red teas in this session and it will be quite interesting and fun. Great session with all of you today. I truly respect the things that you bring to the sessions always fun to try great things with you. Your responsibility this week, A, if you're in California, stay dry. If you're anywhere else in the US, stay warm. Thirdly, everywhere in the US, stay healthy. Next week, we'll see you with Golden Burst. Bye-bye now. Bye. Thank you.